Hey guys, it's Rich Boy Jr. back in with another video, and this is going to be episode 8 of the Starkiller Base mock build series. And this is a pretty exciting one. As you guys can see behind me, there's been a considerable amount of work done this mock this week. Got a new TIE Fighter, got the stage um, at least started looking pretty good, I think. So, but, um, before we get into all that, I do want to give a special thanks to everyone who contributed this week on the live streams. If you guys are not tuning into them, like I always say, it is a great time for you to not only see the mock early, but to just hang out with people and talk Star Wars. What more could you want? So it's a long list. So thank you to Brick Kid, Xavier Soren, Owen Tomlinson, Brother from Another Brick, Perfectly Legitimate Name, Brian Riff, Brick Phase, Lego Soldier 82, Dan Dan 6151, JRK Comics, Tristan Moore, Brick Builder Watts, The Brick Man, Tiny Film Productions, Toa Snake Studios, Cosmic Brick 44, and Arc Trooper 37 Productions. Special thanks to all of you guys for contributing to the live stream via donations. Trust me, it means a lot, especially at a time like this where I am working frantically on this mod to get it in just a displayable state for next week at Brick Fiesta. So uh, a few logistical things actually before I get into the episode. Um, this episode is going to be the last one before I take it to the convention. So next week's episode is not going to be the normal type of episode. It'll probably be something I record at the convention, which will be a little interesting. I'll show you guys like whatever I ended up setting up there, but um, I'm going to be there. So why not actually put that to use? Um, in other words, I'm going to have to basically work this week to get this mock in a presentable state. So my goal um, really from the start of this mock was to have essentially half of it done for Brick Fiesta. It's looking like there's going to be more of a third of it done, which I'm not really concerned about at all. I understand I took a few weeks off for this mock because of various things that you guys have known it. And it's not the worst thing in the world because I feel that I've allotted myself so much time to finish this mock down the road. Like I'm basically planning to have it done around December. So um, time schedule is not going to be an issue. Brick Fiesta, however, does raise a few concerns in how much I actually would like to get done. So uh, moving forward, my goal is basically going to be to um, get enough of the stage done to recreate enough of the scene. Now, what that exactly means, I'm not entirely sure of. It'll ultimately depend on how much I'm able to get done this week. But I feel I have a lot of things to show you guys even this week. So I'm super excited to show it off. Um, enough talking. Let's jump right into the mod, guys. All right, guys, let's check out Starkiller. So one of the key things that I actually finished up this week was getting the platform entirely plated off. So obviously there are tons more of tiles that need to be added specifically to that side. But um, other than those two tiny gaps right there, for the most part, the entire thing is plated off, which is actually... A big deal because that means all I have to worry about is tiling up and boom, it'll be um, presentable for a convention, which is really going to be the main theme for this week. So if we come over here to this side, you can see what I basically did. I still actually need to finish up the like uh, border going there. And it's the last border I'm going to have to do, so I'm actually super hype about that. Those really aren't that fun to do. It gets quite monotonous. But like I said, you got this section plated off. It is lifted, I think, like a brick and a, uh, a plate off the ground. Other thing that was important was actually getting the pieces in to do these elevator sections. So previously, I had just that one. And now we have the both all, all three of them built up in some capacity. Now, there are a couple problems. One thing I didn't realize, I mean, I don't know how this happened, but I guess I didn't order enough black one by two jumpers. So you can see, basically, I don't know if the shadows might be hiding it, but um, yeah, it's kind of hard to see. But basically, right beside that white one by three tile, there's a jumper on either side. It's basically the one by two plate, but only has one stud in the middle, if you're not familiar with it. And the reason I need those is to put the uh, half circle tiles in there to give it that rounded look, kind of like over there. You can see um, there's there's those uh, one by two, uh, those one by one half circle white tiles. And I don't know what the heck happened, but I just didn't order enough of them. I thought I ordered well more than I was going to need, but clearly my math was off somewhere there. So I'm going to have to place an order to get some more of those in, which is kind of annoying because that was a pick a brick wall part that I really should have gotten a lot of and that I thought I did get a lot of, but clearly I didn't because this is like one place on this mock where I need these one by two black jumpers is giving me all sorts of trouble. So um, I'll be hoping that those come in before I leave on Friday morning. That, that's probably, that probably means I need to place that order today. 
along with any other things I think I may need down the line because um, I, I'm pushing it in terms of being able to get parts in on time. So hopefully those will show up. The only other thing I need to complete on these is uh, finding more of those. The only other thing I need to complete for these elevators is actually just finding those one by one uh, half circle tiles in white. I know I have a ton of them. I mean, you guys saw them in Vardos. I bought a bunch of them, but they're probably in like the bags or boxes of parts that I sorted out for Vardos. So I'm gonna have to go through and find a bunch of those to put in this. So that's not something I'm looking forward to because who, who's to tell where those tiny pieces might be, but um, it was kind of an expensive part. So I didn't want to have to buy more of them if I didn't have to. And then I guess finally, it's just a matter of adding the tile down below these. Um, the one on that far side is the most complete looking one and I actually love the way it looks. I mean, I still need to fill in the white tiles on the inside, but I think when it's all said and done, um, the aesthetic of having that there to kind of break up some of the monotony of just the light grays and whites, I think will actually go a long way in giving a little bit more detail to this platform. So I'm actually super excited about that. Another thing I mentioned last week was the problem with the fact that this like elevator is going to be spanning multiple base plates in here this week. And I can actually show you exactly why that was a problem. So with that one over there, it literally just sits right in the middle of the base plate. So I can lock it in. No big deal. If I move the base plate, that can move with it. Now this one, on the other hand, and actually this one as well, um, it's spanning multiple base plates. So that one can separate there. Um, this one right here can pull back, this one can pull back, and then this one can pull back. So there's no obvious place to connect it to either of those base plates because all of them can be moved. So my idea was to basically just not lock it in, to basically build around it and have enough space to where once I set this up where it's going to be set up to actually just kind of place it in there. And that's what I've done. Um, it's not perfectly lined up right now, just kind of with how the tables are worked out, but um, it looks good, I think. I think it'll actually work out pretty well. And it's the same case with this one. You can see the base plate split right there. So it'll just have to be something that I end up uh, modular rising whenever I actually have to move this thing for the convention. But those that's the, the elevator situation. I think that I'm happy with the way those came out, especially being able to get these details in here. Um, the, the hardest part of this elevator was actually uh, figuring out how to have this white line um, here. Cause obviously if I just did slopes or something or like a wedged brick, that doesn't give me studs on the side to kind of play around with and put that tile in the middle there. So what I opted to do instead was I built up this and it's kind of complicated assembly here with uh, two hinge plates and then that those kind of like lay somewhat flush with the slopes that I have there and that allowed me to put those tiles in there and I think once again once I finally find all the parts for it it'll actually look really nice um, just kind of uh, an offhand note one of the things I really do have to do this week like for sure is to add in like technic pieces between these squares um, and here's actually a tip for all of you guys. So a lot of people will, and I mean, I probably should have done this once I started the mock, but um, it's not a huge deal if you don't do it when you start the mock, but a lot of people will use like a one by two brick uh, with the hole, the circle in the middle, the Texic, the Technic pinhole, and use those to connect the base plates and just run into all types of issues with trying to get them together. If you guys have ever tried to like connect two large assemblies with Technic pins that are kind of all over the place, it can be a bit much. It's, it's kind of hard for them to connect because those Technic pins have to line up perfectly. What I advise you do instead is use Technic axles. For one, they typically have more friction, so they'll actually hold a little bit better. And two, they have more give, so you don't have to have them lined up perfectly to get the two like sections to be able to connect to each other. So rather than Technic pins, which is the circle, I wanna be using the Technic axles, which are the T-shaped pieces. Um, the long like bars, there's like they're like T-shaped. I'm sure you guys know what I mean. And those are actually what I'm going to be using to connect all of these individual individual base plates together once we get to the convention. So um, I, th I have a bunch of like Technic parts. It's actually ones that I think I ordered for Crate that we just never ended up using. So I'll get to use those for this mock and hopefully it'll actually turn out pretty well. Um, one of the other big things I did this week was the TIE Fighter. If you guys joined me for that stream, it was actually quite a blast. Um, it was a long stream. It was an all-nighter, but um, it was a good time. I had a bunch of people on 
who are fun to talk to. Just another reason for you guys to be tuning into those streams if you're not doing so already. But we got ourselves another First Order Special Forces TIE Fighter built. So I currently have um, two Special Forces TIEs. There's one over there, one here, and then two of the standard First Order TIEs over there and over there. Obviously, Special Forces 1 is a specialty, a specialty version of the TIE Fighter. I don't want to have too many of those. I think for this entire mock, I might end up being, building just one more of these because I know there's going to need to be one in the hangar, which will kind of be sitting somewhere in this general location. Because I guess when Ray is like climbing the walls inside the base, she tries to... The one that she wants to hijack is a Special Forces TIE. So I'll put one of those in the base and for the other like five, six, or seven of these ties I'll have to build. They'll probably just be the standard versions. Actually, now that I think about it, if I have like them flying over near the trench, I might want to do one more Special Forces. But the point being is that I don't want to have an overwhelming uh, percentage of Special Forces ties. They should, they're specialty versions of them. They shouldn't, they shouldn't outnumber or even come close to the numbers of the standard versions. So um, moving forward for the next few TIE Fighter streams, they're probably all just going to be the standard ones, which is actually a good thing because the standard ones are like 20 to 30 bucks cheaper than the Special Forces ones, believe it or not. So that'll actually work out in my favor. Another thing I wanted to mention is this general section right here. It's kind of in disarray, and that's just because I started tiling it up, and then I realized I ran out of 1x2 tiles once again. So I need to place an order for those. I was kind of under the impression like maybe I can get away with just finding enough in my collection, but I don't want to rely on that because who's to tell when like if I, if I have enough and you know to fill out these sections as well. Like it's still um, it's kind of unpredictable at this point. So I can't just like count the spaces and then look at my collection. There's still going to need to probably be some in these areas and even under there. Well, I'll need this one by two light gray tiles. So that'll have to be an order at the place. And that's why these figures are not kind of positioned right there. I took them all off to place the tiles and I don't want to place them back until those tiles are right there to avoid doing double the work. Another thing I also did was initially there were like um, plates right here, I believe, for figures to stand. Then I realized that I'm going to actually need this general area right here for the transporters. The transporters are going to be pretty long and they're not going to be able to fit between here and here. They're going to have to basically stretch into the area where the figures are currently standing. So I need to actually get rid of these areas where I have plates for the figures to stand. And I might actually get rid of this section as well because I'm, I'm from what it's looking like, that's probably going to be in the way as well. I'm thinking I could have like two TIE fighters here and then two transporters kind of going into there and then into there. Uh, the other thing I didn't consider is the fact that there's a freaking elevator here which means that the transporters are gonna to have to basically be squeezed uh, between here and here, and they'll be they'll be sitting diagonally. But basically, um, it's gonna be somewhat of a tight fit. I'm hoping I can get it to work, and I think I will be. But um, it's gonna be it's gonna be quite the task to get those in there. So we'll see how that ends up turning out. And then, of course, the final thing I have to show you guys this week is the stage. Man, I am so so excited to have finally started this part of the mock. I think it makes a huge difference, especially with having had all these figures positioned here for a little while and just having been working on the platform in general since the beginning of the mock, now finally having at least the middle part of that stage where Hux is giving its speech, it really does just go a long way in making the scene. Like, these are the moments as a builder that you live for when you know, you're building up to a certain point and things are kind of coming into fruition but there's just that one little thing you add to the mock, or in case this, in this in case of this mock, an actual kind of big thing that you add to the mock, but um, it just really brings everything together and helps you even further visualize what you're trying to create and match up, you know, what's in your head with what you actually have built in physical bricks. So having this here means a lot to me. I'm super excited to work even more on it, but. Let's actually dive in and talk about it because there's some actually pretty unique techniques on this thing. So first thing you guys will probably notice is this like hexagon type thing that's uh, patterned into the ground right there. And that was not the easiest thing to come up with specifically because the way I built it, like there's this section and then there's the other section and they both kind of connect to a middle row of uh, bricks in there. It's kind of hard to explain. But um, building snot is always not going to be straightforward. I did consider just using wedge plates with this, but 
getting the right like angles in dark red were extremely expensive. Those only came in one set, the two by three wedge plates in dark red. So I opted to go with the snot technique and um, these pieces really aren't expensive either. I mean, these pieces really aren't inexpensive either, but I, I was fortunate enough to have actually come across them in my many years of collecting Lego um, for some extremely good prices. So I was super hype about that and finally getting to use them on something. I think initially I bought the normal like dark red slopes to do a cafe corner um, Bricklink build, but that just hasn't happened since then. So why not throw them in the Star Killer? It works out pretty well. But um, all in all, like, like I said, the, the snot technique, figuring that out was not easy at all. Um, another thing you'll notice is this section of like plates right here that kind of cover up the edge. Those are literally there to cover up um, because there basically was no like perfect angle of slopes that I could use here that would meet this angle and kind of lay flush with it. So those basically just cover up where the edge, where the bricks would kind of meet the where this kind of angle is and it, they wouldn't really be seamless so that's to kind of rid myself of that issue another thing that kind of took me a little bit of time to work on were these angles down here now this was quite a problem um, and just figuring out like the proper angles and getting studs to line up i know some people will do math with this i guess i'm too lazy to do it i'm, I'm more of a trial and error type of guy when it comes to these things figuring out these angles but uh, one of the things I thought initially might be an issue was the fact that um, this is actually like off by a half stud. So you can see where that front wall meets the ground. Those are actually jumpers and it lies um, at a half stud. And fortunately it was not an issue once I got to the top. It really wasn't an issue at all. Um, the, the gaps just kind of ended up working out and it's always nice when that happens with Lego. And the stage actually came together pretty freaking well. Um, you guys have seen the wall, like the, the slanted wall section that was probably, I think, the, like the fir very first thing I had built for the stage. So now you get a better idea of how that's actually going to meet up with that front area. Got that slanted wall, of course. I got, let me not break this thing while I'm recording. But um, I love the way this looks and especially the use of those like inverted slopes. Those actually work really well in kind of giving like a crevice in there which kind of matches up with the way it should in the film. There's like these like indentions in the walls here. So that's why that's there. And there, there's going to be more of those coming along this way as I expand the stage. So uh, those are a few, I thought, unique things about the stage. You can also see you got the minifigures placed where they should be. You got Phasma, Hux at the front, a couple of Snowboys, and of course, two other First Order Generals. So um, in terms of building, that's all I got done this week. But there was one last thing I kind of wanted to talk about. Um, I'm gonna actually pull up a picture right now. And um, you can see initially, whenever I was deciding to, you know, what I was gonna build for like the first order base area, I'd essentially decided to start from the furthest left red flag and build everything, you know, going from there all the way to the right red first order flag. And what I've realized, especially with having the stage built now and the scale of everything, is that that's just really not gonna be possible with the space I have allotted here. Like, I mean, it's not something I can really build up and prototype beforehand, but um, looking at it and kind of just trying to visualize in my head um, exactly how all of those buildings would fit on this table, I'm, I pretty quickly realized like that's not gonna work if I wanna keep a decent looking scale. Like the stage is gonna be way too big and then everything else behind them is gonna be way too small. So what I instead am electing to do is to just have the main stage area behind Hux. And that's gonna be massive. It's a huge first order flag. It might end up coming up to like here. I don't even know. It's gonna be huge though. I'm gonna need a lot of parts for it. And basically what's gonna bookend either side of this platform, but on the stage, are actually gonna be those two anti-aircraft turrets that sit on either side of the stage. And it's not ideal, I think, in, in a perfect world, I would love to have been able to somehow build that entire, not the entire building, that was never the plan, but at least go from like the left red flag to the right red flag. I think that would have been nice. But if I'm not able to do that, then being able to give a more detailed build for, like I said, the big banners behind Hux and those two giant anti-aircraft turrets that sit beside them, I think those will actually look really freaking cool on both sides of the mock. They'll actually probably stick out 
quite a bit to people um, who, who notice the mock. So those are my plans moving forward. I know it's never fun when you have to change plans in the middle of a mock, but I think that it's really going to be for the betterment of the mock moving forward. So let me know what you guys think about that. And let's actually go ahead to the closeout segment of the video. And that's gonna finish up the video this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed checking out the updates that I got on the mock. Definitely let me know in the comment section below what you thought of the mock. So like I mentioned earlier, just the logistical stuff with, I'm really trying to work hard this week to get the mock in a presentable state. So what I might actually end up doing is maybe posting like a midweek update or so, kind of like I did with Crate before we took that to Brick Fiesta. I think I was almost posting like updates every day for the last week we were working on it because there was so much progress that was happening on the mock. Now I don't anticipate there being that much progress in that short of a span just because um, I'm gonna be working during these days and just other stuff going on. So I won't have like all these all day to contribute to Starkiller, but um, I'm definitely, like I said, gonna make quite a bit of an effort to get this thing in a presentable state, which really just means working on that stage area. The platform, like you've seen, is mostly complete, but that stage is definitely gonna need some work, and I'm also gonna have to figure out how much of like the big flags behind Hux I'd like to actually recreate, because that's like a pretty, pretty pivotal and important recognizable part of that scene. So uh, we'll figure these things out as we go down the line. But all in all, um, I like for this to be an enjoyable process. I don't want to feel stressed out. Um, there'll be a little bit of pressure, which is fine. I'm fine with that, but I, I don't want for this to become more of work than fun. This mock has been fun to work on up to this point, And I know these conventions can kind of change the, the way you look at the mock you're working on because now you're working on a strict time schedule and that's not really the funnest thing in the world. So uh, my goal for this week is to work hard, but to have fun while I'm doing it. And certainly having a community of people like you guys to share it with helps with that. So I definitely appreciate you all in that regard. Other thing I want you guys to let me know about is what you think about just the changes to what's gonna be incorporated into the mock, specifically with what I talked about for the stage area. Um, it's kind of disappointing because I'd love to have you know, most of that big building built, but just looking at the scale of everything, um, it would just be really off. <laughs> the scale would be so off if I tried to squeeze in that much of the building in the space I have allotted. So um, what that does mean, I think, which would be actually be pretty cool, is we're going to have two giant, like, anti-aircraft turrets kind of bookending each end of the stage, which I think will actually look pretty nice. So um, that basically means I get to put more detail and attention to those and really make those a decent scale. So um, I think all in all, it'll actually end up working out pretty well in the end. But um, that's all I got for you guys. Um, like I always say, if you like what I do, go ahead and support the video by hitting the like button, support the channel by smashing that subscribe button. And I'll be back again very soon.